Okay. Where we left off, we were talking about sketching for our spot illustrations, thinking of them as a free-floating image, not cropping them off on any side. I'm going to be demoing this building. You can see my rough sketch there, which is really focused on the energy of the shape. And then my refined sketch, which actually puts, tries to put in the, the identifying marks of the buildings. I have the library and the clock tower and the campus green kind of gazebo things and butterflies and lots of plants to soften angles and then some magnificence coming off the top to make it more exciting and then the student commons building from the side from the campus green. This is all going to contribute to the cover. It will have Nico flying above it and then a title above that. Your spot illustrations will go together with type you design for your posters in the next assignment, right? But for this assignment, we want to get clean line art that then we can color behind. In the assignment demos, you can see that in various ways. So we start with a sketch, whether it's a complicated sketch or a simple sketch, and then we refine it with lines, just clean outlines. We're going to do vector outlines. And for a coloring book, we want to keep it more open and graphic. So what's the difference between that and some of these other line types, the thickness of the line really matters and it can be expressive just like your logos. Lines can go thick to thin, they can taper off into points, but because it's an illustration that's meant to be colored, it doesn't need to be as refined as a logo. If little things are off, if little edges are wonky, that's all very uh, understandable and believable. So here's a past student example with a nice refined sketch using some basic shapes there. You can see how the digital inking, which is what I'll be showing today, really cleans it up and leaves a lot of open space. And then we'll put the color behind the digital inking once we get to that phase. So I'm going to take my sketch. This was just done in pencil. And then I brought it into Photoshop and cleaned up the levels a little bit. But this is not good enough for the coloring book. You can see all the little noise, the soft edges. I want this to all be perfectly clean. So this is where we get to digital inking. I take this sketch and I'm going to open it. There's three different ways we can digitally ink. I'm going to, to show you the most direct vector creation way. Since we've been using Illustrator to make our logos, we'll be using it to make our mural. If I open this image in Illustrator, this is a raster image, it will come in and then just like my logo, I'm going to onion skin it and then on layers on top, trace new vector shapes. But whenever you bring in a raster image into Illustrator, and this is the great advantage of Illustrator. It will give you the option at the top. It says image trace. This is something good to know about because a lot of you will find digitally inking within Illustrator impossibly frustrating. So instead, if I click image trace, what that will do is it will trace my sketchy pencils or whatever I bring into Illustrator, and it will try to draw them as clean vectors. So you can see my pencil sketch rasterized and then the image traced version here in Illustrator. That does a pretty great job, except that you get all this kind of noise and frustration. So some students like to start with an image trace that then they can clean up, right? In order to do that, you use the image trace options. There are advanced options here. I'm just doing the black and white mode. And then you can set them to be more sensitive or less sensitive. You can use the advanced options, which I recommend. So that, that gets some of the brick texture in there. And then we can say ignore white which is important. I'll show you the difference there. If we don't say ignore white, then it will fill in 
the empty space with white. But if we say ignore white, it will give us the clean black line art that we're looking for. Right. And then once you're happy with the preview of it, you think that's as good as it's going to get, then you click expand at the top. And that will turn it into individual vectors that then you can smooth and adjust as you like. Now, my pencil sketch was already pretty refined because I had to use it to sell the concept to the president's office. So as a live trace, yes, it has some things that need to be improved. And I can do that with the pencil tool, my favorite tool selecting, seeing the anchors, and then I can simply use my magic scissors and clean it up. But I want to show you the other ways to digitally ink as well. So this is how you'll do it if you ink by hand and then scan it, clean it up in Photoshop, and then bring it into Illustrator. Your inking by hand will, will live trace better, image trace better than my pencils, right? Because ink is a puddle whereas pencils are just wax and metal flakes pushed into paper. So the more you can kind of keep clean lines, big open spaces in your inking, the better it will turn into a vector. Okay, let me Command Z here, back to the beginning before I turn this into a vector. And I'll show you the, the digital inking within Illustrator way to do this. And I'll call this video digital setting up for digital inking in Illustrator. Okay, so I've brought my raster image into Illustrator. I do not want to live trace it. I'm still trying to get back to before I live traced it. <laughs> there it is. So that's my raster image. You can see the pixels now open in Illustrator. It comes in as layer one. I can double click that layer and then click on dim images to 50%. That's onion skinning it. Then I'm going to lock that layer so I don't accidentally mess with it. That's like putting tracing paper over my sketch. Then I'm going to click on the, the new layer tool. Looks like a post-it. And I'm going to use my, my tablet. And I am going to use my brush options. And I'm going to use this tool I absolutely love for digital inking called the blob brush. So you want to find the blob brush. If you don't see it in your tool options, go to your three dots. Find it within your options here, right? And you can put it anywhere. Sometimes it's with the pencil tool. Sometimes it's with the brush tool. But this is the blob brush. It is different than the regular brush. So the blob brush, just like the pencil tool, if I double click it, I have my settings. And what's great is you can set not just the size like you can for a brush in Photoshop, but unlike Photoshop, you can set it to be smoother or more accurate. I'm going to set mine to be a little bit more smooth than accurate. Because digital inking is it's like being a painter of animation cells. You want kind of clean lines. I'm going to pick the size. Notice it's not in pixels. It's in points, just like type. So I'm just going to guess, I'll see it pretty quickly, at something about 20 point. That'll be the largest it can get. And then if I set it on pressure, I have my tablet installed, right? And so it can be pressure sensitive, though Illustrator sometimes has problems working with tablets to make that so. And then under variation, it's kind of weird how they do this, but I'm going to go... I want a full variation of the size so that it goes from either one point all the way up to 21 point. Then the angle is at zero, the roundness is at zero, and I just say okay. 
Oh gosh, it's gorgeous. All right. So if I'm lucky enough to be able to have this set up, then my blob brush, if I press lightly, gives me a nice thin line. If I press harder, it's a thicker line. And if I press the hardest, that's my full 21 point line. So I do a little ink test like that to see if it's the right brush size for the illustration I want to do. And this is the blob brush in Illustrator. Then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to start with a little detail. And it's just like inking by hand. Except I'm not being nearly as fussy as I am when I do a logo. Because I know this is for a coloring book that's meant to be filled in by children. I can hit Command Z at any time. Oh, this is what's great about the blob brush. Yeah. It's smoothing it out as I go. I just can't get this hand right. If I want to tilt it, I can use the rotate hand tool and I can tilt the canvas, then go back to my blob brush. Like so. Now, what's wonderful about it is the blob brush automatically merges paths that overlap, just like blobs of ink. So if I open up my layers, you'll see that each of these individual blobs of ink is one path, right? But as soon as I cross over them, they become a merged path. Just like ink swallowing up other ink. That's why it's called the blob brush. And if I want to refine it, I'm not limited to just using the brush. I can always go to the pencil tool with the selection tools, the direct selection tool. And for instance, for these clock hands, I can merge them like that if I want to. And I can set the pencil tool to be smooth as well. So vectors can always be altered and cleaned up. Now I don't want you to be too perfectionist. I know some of you that can be an obstacle. And then of course we can always delete paths. Whoops, not whole layers, sorry, but paths that we don't like. Turn the sketch back on. If I want to rotate it back, I just double click on that hand tool. And I can use spacebar to just move around as I'm zooming in. So it's like having um, tracing paper and pencil that you can zoom in on, rotate, and perfectly correct each ink stroke. So this is my favorite way to make line art. What's the problem? Well, it requires having Illustrator. It requires having a tablet. And it requires the tablet being set up with all the different versions to be pressure sensitive. And that doesn't always work on our computers here in the lab just because of the different updates to Adobe all the time. So I'm just going through. Ink like a king. Inking's pretty slow and meditative. Remember the blob brush, you can continue lines. This often happens in hand inking too. It gets thick and then it gets thin again. But I can always just use my selection and my pencil tool. Oops. And as long as I start on the path and end on the path, I can clean those up. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying not to be too perfectionist. So I scanned my refined sketch. So it was a little bit cleaner than a screenshot. And we have a scanner at the back that can do that. But because I'm just drawing over it, a, a screenshot would be fine. Okay. But if you're going to, to scan your, or if you're going to put your 
your hand ink artwork in, I'm going to recommend scanning it 